I'm filming this video shortly after getting back from a QNAP partner event in London. It was a small event put together by QNAP in advance of their larger world tour thing happening in November. And it was their event where they could talk with sales partners, distributors, that sort of thing. And for some reason, me as well. And thank you so much for inviting me, QNAP. Um, I'll say straight away, other stuff that was there, uh, the USB to 10 gig, uh, dual 10 gig adapter. I actually saw it in operation. It worked like an absolute charm. A 60 bay expansion chassis while I was talking about their new uh, mega QUTS systems there and there was even talk about some of their high availability and shout out to Craig Greed doing seamlessly uh, one of the best um, high availability demonstrations live that I've ever seen it was fantastic it did the job and I know how nerdy that sounds but if you care about these things you'll know what I mean however there was not a whisper of a follow-up to this device now Things that we do know about with the new desktop series, number one, there is the new 62A series that we learned about during Computex. That is effectively this device with its wings clipped. It's gonna be their new value uh, proposition there, and that is going to be replacing the 62 series already in existence. But this is the 62A, the new version there. So the older generation had a dual core Intel processor. This is carrying on with an Intel processor, but it's the same damn processor as this, uh, the N509. Five. It's going to be rocking out with 4 gig of DDR4 memory, 2.5 gig, a couple of M.2s inside. We knew this already from Taiwan, um, and it's going to be arriving soon, and it's going to be profiled to be that much more affordable proposition. And, and as good as that sounds, it's again with its wings being clipped, having that released while this is still available seems really odd to me because of the uh, similarities in the hardware profile between the two of them. And again, a lot of that comes down to we kind of assumed the brand would launch a lot of these refreshes in relatively close proximity. Now, whether the delays are being caused by things such as, you know, uh, existing inventory around the world of the 6.4 series, or because they have a larger proposition put together for that world tour they're working on, we're not too sure. But the next thing we need to talk about is that QU series that we talked about around a month ago at the time of recording a new 4, 6 and 8 bay device, uh, the QU504, the QU506 and the QU508. Now, these seemed a little bit more formidable. These have got the new Intel Twin Lake processor, the M150 or N355 inside there. These have got um, 8 or 16 gig of DDR5 memory, and that system arrived with 2.5 gig, though it lacked PCI upgradability. But unfortunately, we've heard, now heard from several sources, including QDAP themselves, at their partner event getting it confirmed, that this is only for China. This is one of their lines that traditionally would have had the letter C at the end, denoting that it was going to be China only, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, that even though there is no C, it is most certainly only for China, which means this is not going to be any kind of formal uh, replacement for this series over here. So once again, what is going on? I'll tell you right now, I have no formal confirmation of the new 6.4 upgrade or refresh. I do know there's something. I've seen some model IDs floating around, uh, but nothing I can point out and say is, you know, legit. A lot of it can be just changes of model numbers just being reserved, reserved in the back end of knowledge bases and databases and download sections. But... As I said in a previous video, the good thing about the QU series ultimately being confirmed means we can actually ascertain the majority of what we expect the follow up to this two feature. There is one big question mark for me, but I'll get onto that in just a moment. Ultimately, the CPU, the change up towards the M150 or the N355, a four core and eight core respectively, likely means that the 6.4 series is going to effectively be the same profile. PCI upgrade, M.2 NVMe, uh, scalable memory, uh, likely starting at 4 to 8 gig and scaling up, uh, perhaps not more than that, more on that in a moment, and featuring 2.5 gig on the rear via two ports. But again, we're going to debate and discuss that in just a moment, while that might not be the case. The N150 and the N355 CPU are arguably better in almost every single way, bar one, than the Intel Celeron inside the 6.4 series there. We are talking, it is a newer CPU overall with a more recent release. It also has both a higher clock speed when needed, but also a lower base 
uh, performance speed if you need to. That means that the TDP, or overall power consumption, is going to be lower. On top of that, the N355 is an 8-core processor. Uh, the N150 has a lower TVD of all three CPUs. And thanks to that support of DDR5 memory, likely so, then there's also going to be on-die ECC, that although is not the same as traditional ECC, because it is more of a closed loop rather than data passing all the way through from outside to in, it is still very, very useful in Indeed, and that higher graphical frequency that starts at 1 gigahertz and goes up to about 1.35 on the Intel Twin Lake series is also going to be hugely beneficial from everything to transcoding to VM and surveillance. Now, it's not all good news. Uh, the Intel Twin Lake only allows for a single memory channel. Keep that in mind. So these systems are almost certainly only going to have one sodium slot, or at the very least, never going to exceed more than 16 gig. But again, uh, official manufacturer specifications pretty much indicate this as well. But, 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 we do need to discuss the age-old matter of PCIe lanes. That's right. The Intel Celeron processor inside this and in that new 62A series is an 8-lane Gen 3 processor there. The Twin Lake for all its efficiencies, it's actually a nine-lane processor. So there's an extra little lane going begging there in terms of architecture. That If they take that CPU and put it into this framework, where is it going to go? Is it going to perhaps make its way into the PCIe? Perhaps not, because they're already going to have that PCIe and they've managed it in this profile that they've got inside this box. Are they going to soup up those network connections? And for me, that's where it could get interesting because in order to show that this new box is the big new bad, it's going to be interesting to see what they can show that it does that the predecessor couldn't, whether it will be things like SD card slots, whether it will be direct USB connectivity that they worked on before. But I think realistically, we might see it scaling up network connectivity, at the very least the PCIe slot there, which I think would be hugely beneficial. Now, they don't have to utilize that additional lane that the Twin Lake is providing to it. They can just spread it across and make sure the system just runs that lickety bit better inside. But they could go down that road and upgrade those NICs towards 5GBE. Yes, some of you might be thinking 10GBE there. The one bugger with that is a, a lane of Gen 3 will give around eight to 900 megs there. So unless they're gonna strengthen out uh, what's already there and cut back on something else to allow it to have 10 gig. However, the model IDs that I've seen dribbed and drabbed online alongside discussions I've had with QNAP in the background, none of those have seemingly indicated that 10 gig is something being considered on a 6.4 follow-up there. So I think realistically, we are looking at either 2.5G or perhaps they're gonna be integrating five gig there. They wouldn't be the first, in fact, Technically, they were the first with their 8 bay a little while ago in the N series. But again, it's worth keeping that in mind when looking at these boxes that there is every possibility that the main scale up is going to be not only those CPUs that we've had confirmed, but possibly the network connectivity there. But really, it comes down to the price. I think a lot of users are looking at this right now when the 6.4 series hasn't really changed too much in price over the last two years. I wonder what's going to happen when that 6.2a series comes in and starts hitting against it, which although it's a scale up over the 6.2 that came before, it's very close to this in terms of hardware profile. Right now, Intel Twin Lake processor NAS devices that are OS free are pretty darn affordable, as little as $150 to about $250 in some places. Now, yes, these are coming out of kind of box shippers out of China in some cases, but still nonetheless, QNAP are going to have to make a very attractive proposition there for their Intel Twin Lake series if they are going to command a price tag comparable or even higher, most likely, to what the 6.4 series um, commands at the moment. Yes, it, there's a turnkey solution, and that is vitally important. And there's is a ZFS um, solution as well, with QUTS already supported on Intel Celeron processors in their portfolio, and almost certainly will roll out, if not as the default, then at the very least a more strongly hinted option on a follow-up to the 64. But that's really everything we know, and it isn't that much. I'll say right now that if they are going to roll out a 64 follow-up, it ain't happening this side of the year. It's definitely going to be at least Q1, Q2 of next year. So if you're sat on the fence, either get your backups in order elsewhere or buy something else, because right now I can't see a 64 follow-up coming. And the 64 series, as it stands, is the like great box that's still in the three, I think three and a half years since it rolled out is still formidable as hell. And QNAP have committed to it with those QUTS updates and 
as we've seen the majority of other NAS brands roll out their upgrades at this price point and this tier, theirs has still stood out very, very well in terms of that halfway profile and scalability and upgradability, let alone USB adaption and more for expansions. But let me know what you guys think. No doubt we'll be talking about QNAT very, very soon towards the end of the year with their world tour. And of course, whenever it is, the follow-up to this rolls out. But let me know what you guys think and I'll see you on the next video.